Hi, I'm James Fields, and this is an overview of a models and modeling perspective of mathematics instruction. So a models and modeling perspective is an instructional theory that has model listening activities at its core. We'll get into what model listening activities are throughout the presentation. A models and modeling perspective was originated by Richard Lesh and they use model listening activities or MEAs. So these model eliciting activities were originally developed for middle school use. And instead of being developed strictly by researchers, they were developed by parents, teachers, and researchers working together. So a few important characteristics about model listening activities are firstly that they're designed to give the teachers insight into the students' mathematical problem-solving capabilities and their thought process during their mathematical problem-solving. Also, they emphasize depth rather than breadth in the curriculum. And <clears throat> thirdly, the students rather than the teachers mathematize the situation. So key difference between MEAs and traditional textbook problems is that in traditional textbook problems, students typically are using formulas and algorithms that they've learned and trying to make sense of them in an applied problem. Whereas in MEAs, the students are actually the ones creating those abstract representations and mathematizing the problem. So in this graphic on the left, you see a typical textbook kind of traditional approach where applied problem solving is within traditional problem solving. In other words, you know, you might have some applied problems at the end of a unit, whereas on the right in the models and modeling perspective, traditional problem solving is a subset of applied problem solving. In other words, the the material or the unit is introduced with an applied problem, the students mathematize a situation and then use their mathematization to solve traditional problems. There are six MEA design principles and I'll go through each one of these individually. The model construction principle means that very basically the students create a mathematical model that actually describes a real life situation. So the reality principle doesn't mean that the problem actually has to take place in real life. It means that the problem presented should give students the opportunity to draw knowledge that they already have and that uh, the problem should be relevant to the students. The self-assessment principle means that within the problem, students should have the ability to test if their solutions are viable. And the best way for this to happen is that the problem presented has a clear purpose. In the construct documentation principle, students not only reveal their thoughts while solving the problem, but they also create a paper trail of their thoughts so that teachers can look back on what the students were thinking and have documentation of it to inform future instruction. In the construct shareability and reusability principle, the students develop a model that can be easily adapted to similar situations and used by others to address similar problems. A good example of this would be a formula, an algorithm, or a graph that others could use to solve a similar problem. So the effective prototype principle and the previous one we looked at, the construct shareability and reusability principle, might be easy to confuse, but 
if you think about it, the effective prototype principle is kind of used by the student themselves when they address a similar situation in the future. So the teacher could say, hey, do you remember when we did that model eliciting activity and kind of draw on the, the mathematization that the students themselves created? So let's take a look at a really simple model eliciting activity to kind of get a better idea of what this looks like in a classroom. So here's, uh, it's called the bottle problem. And the goal here for teachers and researchers uh, was to get better insight into you know, what the students are thinking about rates of change and relationships between variables. In this MEA, students are asked to model fluid level in a bottle over time as fluids being poured into the bottle. And the original part of the problem is for the rectangular bottle shown. After students create a model for the rectangular bottle, their next task is to create a model for any shape bottle. So they need to describe how fluid level over time might change for any shape bottle so that others can answer the same question using their tool quickly. So this fulfills the model construction principle because a model is being created to mathematize a situation. Uh, the reality principle because the students can uh, draw knowledge that they already have. We've all seen fluids being poured into a bottle before. Also the construct shareability and reusability principle because they have to create a general model for any size or shape bottle for others to use. So here's a graph the students made for the bottle problem. You can see the graph here and also on the bottom some notes that the students made about the graph. As a teacher you can probably imagine that you'd get insight into what the students are thinking about this problem if you were walking around the classroom. Uh, however, you can see the construct documentation principle is met because we have a paper trail here of what the students were thinking while they were going through this problem. For the self-assessment principle, students are given a clear purpose here and they could actually grab a few different bottles and some water and check and see if their graphs make sense. For the effective prototype principle, one can probably imagine teacher drawing on this activity when the students are working on new concepts and rates of change. So if the bottle problem was done at the beginning of the unit, the teacher could get some really good insight into you know, what the students are thinking, maybe some of their uh, preconceptions or misconceptions about rates of change and covariational relationships, and also use that use that information to inform instruction going forward. So one could probably see how this really simple MEA that could be done in uh, maybe one class period could be used as sort of formative assessment at the beginning of a unit. A models and modeling perspective and MEAs are aligned with constructivist learning theory and the research in MEAs is built upon in part, the work of uh, Piaget, Vygotsky, Bruner, and Deans, among others. So model listening activities were not only designed to give teachers and researchers insight into students' mathematical problem solving, but they were also used to advance research in mathematical problem solving. So that insight, hopefully, that teachers and researchers get from the students will lead to new theories in mathematical problem solving that can be tested using model listening activities. Here's some questions that Lesh and Zuwajewski pose to inform future researchers to that end. To conclude, little is currently known about mathematical problem solving. Uh, model listing activities are potentially powerful tools for both mathematics education researchers and teachers to gain insight into student thinking during the mathematical problem solving process and advance this research. Mathematics students can also benefit from MEAs in connecting and abstracting complex mathematical concepts and also gain insight into their own mathematical problem solving capabilities. 
despite the potential benefits of a models and modeling perspective, widespread incorporation of MEAs into mathematics classrooms is going to require a paradigm shift on how a lot of educators and policymakers view mathematical knowledge. If that paradigm shift is to happen, future research into mathematical problem solving and thinking with MEAs will likely be a central component to that change.